Hiya folks, sorry I've left it so long. I uh, didn't mean to um, from my last video, um, but uh, I've had a few health issues, mainly it's a problem with my eyes. Um, but uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you very much for my last video. I can't believe it, over 2,000 views. Uh, also, I picked up a load, a load of 20 new subscribers as well. And um, I'm just so humbled and uh, thanks very much guys i'm glad some people appreciate this channel um when i set it up about what four years ago three or four years ago i said that if i get over 60 subscribers i'll be happy and that's what and i've got more than that now and so i'm, I'm well sort of uh, chuffed i never set out to sort of get thousands upon thousands of uh, subscribers and um, you know I just wanted it to be a general channel about my music and also I put a few film videos in and uh, it's sort of done that and thanks very much guys I'm really really chuffed uh, again so anyway folks let's do what we're here for uh, music um, let's have a look at some music um, basically today's video is basically what I've been listening to I've saved a few for another video because I, I don't want to leave it sort of like five or six weeks before I make another video. But there's a fair few bits to show you. And uh, the first band is this band, Foreigner. Now, don't write them off. Uh, they're one of the biggest selling bands on the planet, believe it or not. In the 70s, they were huge. And this record is the Lou, got Lou Graham on vocals and uh, you've got all their huge hits, I might get the, the thing out uh, this was the CD sort of leads to the next one which I do want to talk about but uh, yeah it's a really really good CD and you'll pick it up for about two quid if you shop around, they're not expensive and uh, yeah the great band don't write them off normally with regulars to me viewers I tend not to show the run of the mill stuff I listen to um, but today I make an exception um, because um, I want people to discover this music it's really really good so anyway it brings me up to this CD which I do want to talk about and that's the 30th anniversary of Foreigner uh, concert CD and by this time Lou Graham had left and they got Kelly Anson on vocals and he used to sing with a band I believe called Hurricane uh, if I'm wrong correct me downstairs but also um, of this record as well you've got John Bonham's son on drums and uh, yeah it's a really really good live album you've got all their bigots and uh, Greg will be happy yes it has it's got Greg's favorite song on as well jukebox hero and it's really really good listen uh, Mick Jones I always get in my look with Mick Taylor he wrote a lot of the stuff and there they all are look but if you haven't discovered this band um, it's got Greg the Egg's favourite jukebox here and a whole lot of love as a um, sort of encore and you've got all the bigots or like head games dirty white boy that's not really a politically correct song nowadays is it uh, cold as ice uh, but yeah it's a great band I mean most of the young metal heads who might be watching this would be bulking and they're saying oh don't like that you know, give it a chance but uh, anyway the only thing I noticed about Foreigner in the 70s, they seem their music sounds like a lot of the Rolling Stones songs. Um, I'm not going to mention it, but one song's a blatant rip-off rip from Shattered. Some of their songs sound like so of records of some girls. And uh, also, uh, Greg's favourite song, I've discussed this with Greg before, it sounds, Jukebox Hero sounds a bit like um, a bit of uh, Tommy, you know, the rock opera. Elton John's song, you know, was that one about the jukebox E song? But apart from that, it's really, really good stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a great CD. But I would have bought it for the fact Jason Bonham was on um, on uh, drums. You know, I'm a big fan of the Bonhams. His dad used to play with Led Zeppelin, John Bonham. And uh, but yeah, pick it up. And it cost you a couple of quid as well next band I would never normally uh, show but I like a more 70s rock and that is the main, mighty super tramp this is a very cheap uh, CD to buy and this CD opened up my eyes because it's one of these you get like 30 songs or 40 songs on it for three who's arguing three quid 
and it's got stuff on here that's really really good and I'm not familiar with it so uh, yeah uh, like don't leave me now and uh, free as a bird uh, all this stuff I hadn't really I, I know their um, catalogue really well I've been listening to this band I discovered them back around about time Breakfast in America was in the charts uh, that's in the 70s I believe um, but yeah this is phenomenally good and uh, again the only reason why I'm showing it is give it a go don't write it off and think you know it's not death metal it's not heavy metal it's really really good stuff now the next one it leads me to was this one and uh, again this is live in 97 uh, Hodgkins Roger Hodge I think Roger Hodgkinson he writes some good stuff and it's all live I haven't got round to play this yet but I just wanted to show it again it won't break the bank just you know check it out and the great thing about it is it won't break the bank the next one I bought was this record the Hollywood um, Roses now if you know your glam history or your rock history this is the predecessor to Guns N' Roses Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin used to sing with this band then they went on to Guns N' Roses and this is one of these uh, songs you get a load and load of um, special guests the only reason why I bought it you had a fantastic cover of Jailbreak that was Thin Lizzy and you had Mick Taylor of the Stones um, on the gu guitars you've got Tracy Guns, Pat Travis, uh, Teddy Zigzag Chris Webber, Phil Lewis and Gilby C Clark on it as well and uh, yeah you've got Kobe Veal I think it's the Colby Veal on vocals Danny I can't pronounce on bass and uh, yeah it's just that that's that's the line up there some of the songs are a bit naff and you can see where a lot of the hooks from the original Guns N' Roses stuff came from as well but it, it, it's not bad and uh, you know it t tells you all the thanks to and that um, so, as I say some of the songs are a bit naff but it's worth it for a few quid I pay for it and as I say it's going in the Rolling Stones collection because the Mick Taylor um, sort of um, ish issue on it and I think this video is going to be a part two part two now the next three I bought off no, Metal Mickey bless him and if you haven't discovered his channel he, um, do so he's fantastic we always horse tra trading or our KCDs and that is a band Greg who's very familiar with all three the burning witches now if the, for the people who don't know this is a Swiss female lineup uh, uh, metal stroke yeah call it heavy metal band and uh, yeah they're not bad um, a sort of band that sort of passes the time away to be truthful they did a lot of cover versions on here they do jawbreaker uh, holy diver uh, you got like a live set they did holy diver then you got a uh, jawbreaker which is obviously a Judas Priest song unless they've written some of themselves and uh, this one you've got uh, all this sort of stuff um, I can't even see it in the eyes of that bad forgive me but yeah I'm not going to um, read it out my eyes are really sort of itching at the moment and I can't see it but yeah the Witches of the North I believe was their original material album is the last recording and uh, I love the girl's voice she can phenomenally sing but me personally I found it just above average it was nothing to set me on fire um, it starts off with that Celtish chanting or whatever you want to call it in a monastery chanting uh, which hundreds of heavy metal albums do now you've always got some sort of Celtish stuff in there or mo uh, it comes from a mon monastery it gives you that doomy sort of taste which I'm not too keen on now you sort, sort of you know change the records get boring but uh, it's an average CD uh, I, I was very bored I must admit with some of the, the girl can seriously sing in this but I found some of the riffs really really tedious I've heard them a hundred times before if you know what I mean maybe Metal Mickey will comment on it as well but it was nothing original sort of nothing you you but it's listenable you know what I mean but anyway folks uh, next one is another new release and that's D Snyder and he I've been uh, listening to him since about 1980 and it's called Leave a Scar it's the brand new uh, Snyder CD 
and uh, again I found it musically very very solid uh, but the only thing I didn't like about it, uh, no I'll say what I did like about it, there is some good songs on here, I Got A Rock uh, there is some good good songs but the only thing I found with it is that again it was a very tedious listen um, I found uh, Dee Schneider's got a phenomenal uh, voice he's probably one of the best top five voices in metal full stop or top ten you've got to put Dee Schneider in there but I found some of his singing sort of irritating me he, he was singing you know you, you try and sing something that's not in your range or you're, it's like Ozzy doing that uh, Miracle Man uh, when he was singing a lot higher uh, than he normally does. It just, is, you know, I found it hard to listen to. Um, but that's my only criticism with it. But yeah, go out and buy it. It's just me probably being super critical and I need to listen to it. I've listened to it twice now. Uh, maybe I need to listen to it. But there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying that. I just found D. Schneider's vocally was a bit intensive sometimes. Very hard to listen to. Um, go back to sort of like seeing the old st uh, stuff, but you can't say that because they're constantly evolving. But I hope I get over what I mean. I I'm trying to say about this CD. Um, you know, just some of the lyrics are just really these vocal range. You're sort of going outside the box too much with it. Anyway, um, please comment downstairs. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.